to move over to um, Nick. Over to you, Nick. Well, thanks, Andrew, and uh, thanks, Lucy. It's really wonderful to actually get that real detailed sense of how we need to how we need to change the transport sector, but also the the crisis we fail we face now, and particularly the the just transition element. Um, so, Vanessa, do you want to put up some slides? Let's see if this works. Wonderful. Sadly, I have I have no future generations who are going to interrupt me, um, but uh, I'll, I'll run through this. So, really great to to be to be with you. What I'd like to go through is just some. Um, really uh, early lessons from work we've been looking at uh, on the just transition how we can drive forward on climate action but also deliver positive social impact um, in the process and this is through the lens of the finance sector i come from the finance sector I used to work at hsbc which after seven years i realized stood for how simple became complex um, and so my focus is how we mobilize finance uh, for uh, a just transition for climate action and social impact and in many ways, I, th I think we, when we think about transition, we think about emitting sectors. But one of the sectors perhaps that needs to change most to enable us to make the transition is the finance sector. 20 trillion pounds in assets just in the UK uh, alone. So that's, that's what I'm going to be um, running through. So next slide, please. So one of the things, uh, my having worked on climate change for 20 years or so, or th almost 30 years now, is that generally our most strategies have been socially blind. And I think it really is in the last few years um, that we've recognized how important uh, a just transition is, both because it's the right thing to do, it's, it's right from a principled point of view, but also to build the broad uh, coalition we're going to need for change. Um, and, and I think that's now uh, accepted and that, uh, that's now been deepened with the, the social shock we've seen with uh, COVID-19 and uh, I think the broad consensus that we need a, a green and an inclusive recovery. Um, one of the dimensions I'll touch on briefly about a just transition is, is clearly um, there's, there's a sector dimension, which we've heard, heard from, from Lucy. Um, there's a sort of human, different human dimensions, but there's very much a place-based uh, dimension that key sectors, whether, whether airports or indeed uh, industrial sectors, are located in particular places. So that there is a, a, a broad uh, sort of regional dimension that we need to, need to focus on. When we're thinking about finance, and we're thinking about the UK in particular, place-based finance is a particular gap. Um, the, the UK financial system is particularly uh, centralised um, and so we need to be thinking about new instruments, new institutions and also new uh, intentions. The work I've been doing the last three years, I think probably three years ago, not a single financial institution around the world really had heard about the Just Transition. Um, we now have major investment firms, uh, pension funds who are managing our money on our behalf. Uh, banks and so on, starting to recognize that we need to join up uh, the green and the social, which is a positive start. This is early days, I would say. And now we need a, a, a credible, uh, sustainable recovery plan um, to deploy the savings we have, the financial resources of the government, and really to provide a direction uh, for the recovery uh, for financial markets through this decade. And one of the things we'll be doing, launching in a, in a week, week or so's time, is a uh, financing just transition alliance focused on the UK. And we have about 30 institutions, investors, um, and banks um, and so social finance organizations and, and, and also organizations such as the TUC to really deliver sort of practical outcomes in the run up to COP26 next, next year. So next slide, please. So in terms of just transition, uh, a phrase that is, is used now increasingly came out of the, uh, the labor movement to ensure that the process of, of environmental change, uh, though that, that's, uh, the impact of that is, is the benefits and potentially the burdens are shared fairly, both in terms of distributional issues, who gets what, and also participatory issues, how decisions are decided. What I think is striking, and then maybe uh, in terms of a rapid change, is this has moved very quickly onto the policy agenda, uh, perhaps um, uh, prompted by issues such as the Gilets Jaunes in France, uh, but also recognizing the scale of the change we need to make, um, where the benefits are so large as well, we need to have greater public buy-in. And the Committee of Climate Change in the UK making it very clear uh, this summer that the just transition is really a crucial part of meeting uh, the net zero target in the UK. So in the work we've been doing, these sort of five themes have come through as key uh, 
uh, to uh, the just transition. First is really realizing the social benefits. The transition is a great thing and um, there could be many more uh, jobs in renewables than in fossil fuel sectors, but how do we ensure that these are high quality jobs um, and have uh, decent wages, good working conditions, uh, enable workers to, to uh, participate in decisions through their trade unions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one, one, uh, one real challenge. How can we maximize benefits? The second is clearly thinking through some of the, the risks of the transition. Um, to how can we avoid uh, stranded workers and stranded um, communities? Um, and, and clearly, as we've seen in the, the COVID crisis, that these can be quite, quite, quite rapid changes. So the av aviation sector, also in the UK, the North Sea oil and gas sector, again, um, it's sort of transition shocks being brought forward uh, by many years. Just transition is a question of empowerment, um, particularly empowering those affected uh, by change. Um, and that means new forms of participation in the workplace, in the community, and also at the national level. So the Citizens Assembly in the UK is a great mechanism for that. It means thinking, thinking ahead, anticipating these shifts, uh, and particularly uh, thinking through what this means for really economy-wide reskilling uh, that we're going to need for the green economy. And finally, all of this requires finance, uh, public finance from the government, but also how we align uh, private finance, whether that's in investment or banking or stock markets, um, with both um, climate goals uh, and environmental goals, but also with social goals to have a just transition. Next one, please. So uh, our little uh, Greek or Roman temple here in terms of some of the, 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 the pillars that we've been looking at. So clearly, um, the Just Transition is about people. It's about workers, both at sort of big, uh, big firms and big, big institutions, but also small businesses who often maybe are, are weak, have the weakest position in, in, in the marketplace. It's about communities. Um, it's about consumers um, and also about citizens. Then it has to be sector specific and I think um, Lucy gave us a really good uh, elaboration on what that means in particular sector in, in, in avi aviation. And then place-based. Um, the transition will not be geographically neutral uh, and will particularly impact, uh, certainly in the UK, more industrial uh, regions uh, such as the West and East Midlands and uh, and Yorkshire and, and the Humber uh, region. So, so we need to think of this through a place-based lens and I'll go on to that in the next slide, please. So um, the LSE, the Grantham Research Institute, is part of a, uh, a network called the Place-Based Climate Action Network, which brings together University of Leeds, uh, University of Edinburgh and Queen's uh, Belfast. And the aim there is really to think about this place-based uh, dimension, not just because it's, it's, it's the right thing to do in terms of obviously responding to community needs, but also we see in so many examples that actually uh, communities are actually can be much more ambitious uh, than national government. And that's certainly the case uh, in, the, in the UK in terms of the climate emergency uh, process. So my role is, is to look at the finance dimension. How can uh, the financial sector respond to place-based needs? We've uh, looked particularly through this lens of the just transition and have had dialogues across the country, realizing very, very, very different uh, needs, whether in Belfast or Birmingham, uh, in Bristol, uh, Cardiff, uh, Cornwall, Edinburgh, Leeds and London. So very, very different uh, dimensions. Issues around financial access for uh, black and ethnic minority communities in, in Birmingham, Bristol coming through, for example. So some of the questions that are, that are coming through is, Many, many communities, local authorities, regional authorities have signed climate emergency declarations, but actually how does that connect with uh, finance, um, finance for the housing sector, for transport uh, and, and, and so on? Secondly, so do we need new financial instruments and institutions to scale up uh, capital? When we think probably uh, in, in the UK, there are very few uh, dedicated uh, local uh, institutions, um, some uh, building societies, but there really is a, is a dearth there. And then how do we uh, factor in this uh, place-based dimension into national policy, particularly in the context of the COVID recovery? Next one, please. So in terms of the work uh, we've been doing on the, on the financial sector, this in some cases might be seen as a sort of unusual ally for the just transition, but I think 
there has been a, a very strong um, pickup in our understanding. Um, pension funds, for example, who may be uh, managing some of your money, those of you on the call, um, they have to think really decades ahead, really to the end of this century, recognize that climate change is going to destroy their ability to provide uh, pensions and they recognize that uh, this has to be done uh, through the lens of social justice. So um, we now have probably 30 pension funds and other, other institutions uh, around the UK, part of about 160 uh, globally that are now committed to just transition. Most recently been working with the banking sector who potentially are, are closer uh, to the real economy, um, in, particularly in terms of the housing sector, particularly in terms of small businesses, and now eight banks, including all the large banks, have now recognized that the just transition is, 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 is important. And then importantly, thinking really at the sort of where the innovation happens, which is often at the edge of the system in terms of new uh, financial technology firms, uh, foundations, uh, and also community uh, development financial institutions. So that's the sort of community we've been working with. And, and again, probably from very low recognition two, three years ago, I think particularly with, with COVID, recognizing that the green and the social needs to be brought together very clear, clearly. So next slide, please. Just some examples, perhaps, just to maybe give you a sense of what this might mean. Um, and as I say, it's fairly early stages yet, but I think some, some interesting examples. So we've now seen commitments um, from, from pension funds to achieve net zero targets, not, not just sort of the distant targets in, in 2050, but bringing those forward to actions now. And, and many are now adding a just transition uh, dimension. Uh, the, the logo there is for the, law, the, the Northern Local Government Pension Scheme. Local, local Government Pension Scheme is very, uh, very importantly uh, aware of some of the social dimensions of, of change. And the Northern uh, LGPS, I think one of the sort of leading uh, funds who are, are committed to that. Then clearly we need to connect uh, net zero and the issue of fairness into sort of core financial products uh, in terms of sort of housing finance, mortgages and so on and retrofitting the sort of 29 million uh, houses, 19,000 per week we need to do. And then obviously net SMEs. Now West, one bank at a sort of the site here, they've now appointed a head of sustainable finance and just transition to take, take this forward. Then we're gonna to need to innovate. Um, and uh, one of the things that a group uh, called Abundance, which some of you might've come across, is they've designed a new um, way of financing for local authorities, for financing local authority um, climate emergency plan, which are called community municipal investments. These are essentially municipal bonds, very familiar in other countries, in the US or in France or, or in Sweden, uh, but not actually very much used uh, here in the UK. The, the difference is, is this is essentially a, a, a municipal bond for the, the, the modern age and people could subscribe um, to uh, bonds, there have been two so far, one in West Berkshire and one in Warrington uh, through the internet, through, through the internet platform. So there's sort of more, more as a crowdfunded uh, mechanism. Two things here, the local authority gets good, it's a well, uh, well-priced uh, finance, so cheaper than they would otherwise get. Uh, the uh, investors get a return. And because these are targeted at local uh, investors, that actually is another form of engagement between local citizens and uh, uh, climate emergency, which I think is uh, making people connected with their, their money. And then the, the, another example, uh, Friends Provident Foundation, which is a foundation, but also has an investment portfolio. And they've been working with a number of other investors to use their voice with uh, businesses to um, drive uh, cl both climate action and just transition and Scottish and Southern uh, Energy, one of the uh, energy utilities, has as the result of that committed to introduce a just transition plan. So those are just some of the examples, again, early stage as yet, but perhaps the, the biggest area where we, we need to achieve change is um, the policy uh, section, which I'll come on to next. Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, in a, in a session last week, actually, another, another Saturday loss to, to, to these issues, uh, Resurgence magazine had a, a session last Saturday, in fact, and Jonathan Porritt, in his own inimitable way, uh, talked about the build back better bollocks that we often see in so many of these, these discussions. I think what is interesting is how quickly across uh, the policy spectrum we've seen a, a recognition that the uh, way we, we come out of COVID needs to be very different from the uh, economy and society we had. Um, but these are some of the things that have come out of the work we've been doing about what really needs to happen at the, the, the policy level to, to drive all this, this forward. So clearly, 
we need a serious COVID recovery plan. Uh, the EU is probably in the, in the vanguard there, by no means perfect, but 750 uh, billion uh, euros um, with a very, very clear focus on, on, on the green dimension and also uh, the just transition. The UK, uh, we've had a sort of first uh, hors d'oeuvre, let's say, a starter with three billion pounds on green homes in the summer, but this really needs to be scaled up in a very profound way, uh, both to promote uh, the green sectors, but also I think, as, as Lucy highlighted, also think about some of these key just transition uh, plans we're going to need for aviation, oil and gas and other sectors. We're going to need new institutions, so a national investment bank. The UK is very, very strange uh, in, in most industrialised countries. We don't have a public bank that can look ahead of the market and actually uh, crowd in uh, private capital to areas of, of national interest like the European Investment Bank, which uh, the UK will no longer have access to. So that, I think, is now a very broadly based uh, demand and, and desire from, from, from business and, and also the financial sector. Um, we'll also need uh, focusing on place of local investment uh, funds, uh, which could bring together public money and, and private money. You could think of that as a city level or community level or uh, regional level. One thing that the government could do to, to, to finance the green recovery uh, would be through the issuance of so-called green, sovereign green uh, bonds, uh, whereby the, pr the government issues a sovereign bond to investors, individuals or institutions, uh, allocates the money to greener aspects. We've been working on a so-called green plus bond, where it has both the green aspects and also a social dimension. That's now won the support of about 10 trillion uh, of investor support, so big blue chip names like, like Schroeder's. The Confederation of Indi Ind British Industries is behind this as well. The Bank of England, as we know, is also providing huge amounts of, of, of liquidity into the system, another 150 billion announced uh, this week, both in terms of buying uh, government uh, bonds, but also corporate bonds. Uh, here, it's important that uh, this use of, of money is aligned with the, the Paris Agreement, which so far uh, it, has, it, has, it has not been, and to be really thinking a lot more um, uh, explicitly and strategically about it, how its resources are, are aligned with a uh, just transition. And then uh, connecting again with uh, the savings of, of the system. Of, of, of the UK and other, other countries through people's pensions, uh, through their savings plans uh, and so on. A number of, of pension funds are now starting to commit to uh, climate goals, net zero goals and so on. But I think this needs to be far more uh, profound and also involving uh, savers and beneficiaries in the design uh, much more uh, clearly. And then a uh, final slide which is really if you have um, a, a sleepless night uh, during this second uh, lockdown. Lots of uh, reading there, and, and obviously I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions now, later, or, or if you uh, read any of these. So thanks very much, and back to you, Andrew. Fantastic, Nick. Just one kind of quick follow-up um, um, before we 